Okay, welcome back, dear friends. I am Dr. Kalim Raza. Today, in this video lecture, we are going to discuss about the prostate gland. A very important uh, lecture. Why? Because the prostate cancer. This is the most common cancer in males. Benign prostate hyperplasia, the enlargement of the prostatic cells, the epithelial cells, the stromal cells. This is very common in males. So, prostate anatomy in short, this is five star anatomy. So, in this video lecture, we will discuss the lobes of the prostate, zones of the prostate, its important surrounding relations, what is the you know benign prostate uh, hyperplasia, what is trans urethral rejection of prostate in case of the enlargement of the prostate, which is commonly you know used procedure to remove the prostate. And then we will discuss its blood supply also, and then also the lymphatic drainage because the prostate cancer spreads to the lymphatic system to the other parts of the body also. So, in short, today we are moving inside the pelvis. So, these are the bones of the pelvic girdle. Here you can see your ilium, the wing of the ilium, the right ilic fossa, this is a sacrum, this is a left, you know, uh, ilium. So, this is false pelvis above the pelvic brim. You have got you know part of the GIT in this false pelvis, right? Ilic fossa is basically having your appendix also, anterior superior ilic spine, and then below the pelvic brim here. This is important part, and this is true pelvis or a lesser pelvis. Why this is important? Because prostate is present here. Reproductive uh, system organs lying in you know true pelvis. So, this is important to understand uh, the anatomy of the lesser pelvis, the greater pelvis and from this part today we are going to study in detail about the prostate gland. First, you have to understand that what is the importance of the prostate. Prostate gland is basically the accessory reproductive gland. What do you mean by accessory glands? That this gland directly do not involve in the production of the spermatogenesis process, but its secretions are very important for the reproduction. So, first you have to write the definition of the accessory sex glands. Accessory sex glands like you have got you know uh, prostate gland, then you have got seminal vesicles here later we will discuss you have got bulbo urethral glands. So, these are those glands which secretions uh, are helpful for reproduction, but they do not involve also right please but they do not take place in spermatogenesis process because the production of the sperms, the storage of sperms, this is function of the epididism and uh, epididism is also having the head, uh, body and tail and then from uh, that portion your sperms will travel through the vas deferens. Later, we will discuss about the vas deferens and then vas deferens meeting with the seminal vesicles and both seminal vesicles and vas deferens, uh, you know, make this ejaculatory duct which opens in this prostate also. So, prostate is very important gland, uh, especially, you know, when uh, it is about the prostatic secretions or the prostatic urethra or ejacul ejaculatory duct, its relation, this is important. So, uh, first, that accessory sex glands that those glands which are helpful the secretions of these glands are helpful for the reproduction but they do not directly takes place in the process of the spermatogenesis next okay so prostate is inverted 
pyramid shape inverted pyramid shape in lesser pelvis in lesser pelvis are true pelvis are true pelvis okay and size of walnut size of walnut walnut size first we have to write its important you know information high yield things from the prostate gland later we will discuss its relations and then third important point that size the normal size of the prostate 8 grams that 8 grams 8 grams uh, this is a normal size of the prostate and you have to understand you must able to you know uh, examine the prostate also especially in order to differentiate this is a hyperplasia or this is a malignancy why malignancy is dangerous why the cancer is dangerous because it's going to you know metastasize to other parts of the body but prostate hyperplasia uh, that will be localized only to the prostate so uh, digital rectal examination we will discuss uh, later about dre exam also that how you are going to perform this exam but here you have to remember that prostate size normally is 8 gram so when your age is above 40 or above 50 so in males in males right please this information also in males above age of 40 there are almost 30% chances that they will have bph benign prostate hyperplasia the enlargement of the prostate due to the proliferation of epithelial and stromal tissue you should write the definition of bph because this is very important the brain prostate hyperplasia you will see many patients suffering from bph and bph surgeries are very common so bph what is bph write the definition of bph that enlargement of prostate enlargement of prostate due to proliferation proliferation of epithelial and stromal cells so bph this is enlargement hyperplasia increase in number of cell and hypertrophy increase in size remember the difference also so bph will be localized but the cancer is dangerous because cancer will tumors of the cancer will spread to the other parts of the body like to the bones lungs also and brain tissue also so uh, benign prostate hyperplasia is common especially in males after age of 40 there are almost 25 to 30% chances but above age of 80 above 80 when you are above 80 almost 90% of males are having bph benign prostate hyperplasia so this general information is very important so you should understand the significance of this gland that how important this part of your body is for your clinical life and how you are going to apply this your knowledge in your practical life this is important so above 80 years 90% of the males are suffering from prostate hyperplasia and most common cancer in males most common cancer in males also write this information please don't skip that most most common cancer is male uh, is also the prostate cancer most common visceral cancer is a prostate cancer in males and in female that is breast cancer so when you are talking about the deaths due to cancer so overall worldwide the deaths due to cancer are common because of the lung cancer but remember that in males above age of 50 
द कॉमन कैंसर दैट लीड टू द डेथ दैट इज द प्रास्टेट कैंसर ओवरऑल दैट इज द लंग कैंसर बट अब एज ऑफ फिफ्टी द कैंसर द लीडिंग कॉज ऑफ दू नो डेथ ड्यू टू द कैंसर दैट इज द प्रास्टेट कैंसर ऑल्सो सो मोस्ट कॉमन कैंसर बिनाइन प्रास्टेट हाइपर प्लेजिया सो दिस इज अ सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ दिस प्रास्टेट ग्लैंड प्रास्टेट इज यूरिथ्रा इज पासिंग थ्रू दिस ग्लैंड वेन एवर दिस यू नो प्रास्टेट विल इनक्रीज इट्स गोइंग टू अबस्ट्रैक्ट यूर प्रास्टेटिक यूरिथ्रा यू विल हैव प्रॉब्लम इन यूरिनेशन द सिम्टम्स ऑफ द बिनाइन प्रास्टेट हाइपर प्लेजिया लाइक यूरिनरी रिटेंशन यूरिनरी अर्जेंसी यूरिनरी फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड नाउ वी आर मूविंग फॉर्वर्ड एंड वी आर going to discuss the relations of the prostate the relations of the prostate okay the prostate relations first i have told you that prostate is basically inverted pyramid shape so like this inverted pyramid shape so above this is your base and base is just below the neck of the bladder here you can see this is your urinary bladder this is urinary bladder so base of the prostate here base of the prostate is the neck of the bladder neck of bladder and then apex this is the apex in apex you have uh, urogenital diaphragm or the urethra so you can write that uro genital diaphragm and in furo lateral surface you have on in furo lateral surface you have basically the levator ani and furo lateral surface levator and i muscle so it's supporting the prostate gland at the inferior and lateral surface above the base you have neck of the bladder below you have basically the urogenital diaphragm and what is the anterior side so remember anterior side i have told you that prostate is present inside the uh, lesser pelvis so just behind 2 cm to symphysis pubis see 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 symphysis pubis uh, so just behind 2 cm to symphysis pubis so anteriorly anteriorly you have got symphysis pubis so prostate is present just 2 cm behind the symphysis pubis so what is the distance between prostate and symphysis pubis this part just 2 cm and posteriorly posteriorly you have got the rectum so digital rectal exam that's why you can palpate the prostate posterior lobe uh by digital rectal examination also so 4 cm 4 cm from anal canal 4 cm from anal canal so very important very important relations that anteriorly you have got symphysis pubis posteriorly you have got the rectum inferior laterally you have got levator and eye muscle above you have you know base which is the neck of the bladder inferior side you have got apex and that is basically you know uh, present along with urogenital diaphragm so these relations uh, you must have to you know uh, remember and now this the view in this structure this is the sagittal view so now we are going to discuss about the zones of prostate and i will draw this uh, sagittal view so we should have a better understanding okay so please now let's discuss uh, the 
zones of prostate first we will discuss zones then we will discuss about the lobes of prostate it's very important you will have at least one or two questions from this you know uh, lobes and zones it's very important so let's discuss please zone uh, first the zones of prostate prostatic zones prostatic zones so prostate have basically three zones okay let me draw the sagittal view and inside the prostate you have got prostatic urethra remember you have got a uh, prostatic urethra inside the prostate then you have got membranous urethra which is continuation of basically this prostatic urethra then largest part of your urethra is the penile urethra so you have to understand that which part of the urethra is present inside the prostate that is the prostatic urethra so it's passing like this so inside you have got prostatic urethra and then i have told you that also you have got the ejaculatory ducts there will be two ejaculatory ducts and these ejaculatory ducts are basically made up of duct of the seminal vesicle and duct of the vas deferens okay so suppose this is the sagittal view and and here you have got the ejaculatory duct ejaculatory duct which is basically carrying the secretion from uh, vas deferens that carry the sperms and the seminal vesicles the secretion from the seminal vesicles so this is a ejaculatory duct so here you should write that ejaculatory duct there are two ejaculatory ducts and ejaculatory duct is made up of made up of vas deferens plus seminal vesicles seminal vesicles so vas deferens vas deferens the length of the vas deferens vas deferens length is almost 42 to 45 cm and vas deferens will carry sperms from epididymis and it will enter into you must have to uh, write all this information uh, especially you know uh, i will ask my students that i will check in your notes that you have written all this information or not this is very important information later you will forget if you are not going to preserve this knowledge so vas deferens length is 42 to 45 cm and you know vas deferens is coming from testes but how it's entering into your abdomen it's coming through inguinal uh, canal through spermatic cord so passing through inguinal canal and entering to abdomen entering to abdomen by deep inguinal ring d i r i am writing deep inguinal ring very important question that vas deferens is ascending from pelvis in inguinal canal and entering into the abdomen through the deep inguinal ring and then on the both sides it is going to meet look it's meeting here you have got seminal vesicles at this part this is a seminal vesicle and this is your ductus deferens here this is ductus deferens so ductus deferens meeting with the seminal vesicle this is a sagittal view and then both seminal vesicle and ductus deferens combine and meet this ejaculatory duct so ejaculatory duct is combination of two ducts one through the seminal vesicle other is the vas deferens remember so how 
what is the journey of vast deference this almost 45 centimeter length you know uh, basically structure which carry the uh, sperms it's very important its anatomy is also important so you must have to understand that it's entering into abdomen through deep inguinal ring so when we are talking about prostatic zones look prostate have basically three zones this is ejaculatory duct let me label please here we have got ejaculatory duct ejaculatory duct here we have got prostatic urethra if needed also zoom you can zoom if it's required okay you can zoom this structure should must be 100% visible okay okay so ejaculatory duct this is the ejaculatory duct here you have got seminal uh, vesicle this is your vas deferens vas deferens this is prostatic urethra so prostate having three zones first zone this this zone is the peripheral zone so i will erase this information i hope you have noted so right please first uh first zone this zone is the this number one uh this zone is the peripheral zone peripheral zone peripheral zone of prostate number one so you know prostate is also the glandular structure it's a gland and the secretions of prostate will enter into the uh prostatic urethra through small prostatic ducts and it secrete a milky secretions which is rich in citric acid also and some enzymes which is basically a, a fluid for the semen and overall the ejaculatory volume also so prostatic secretions contribute almost 20% right please first this information that prostatic secretions later i might forget so this is important information prostatic secretions contribute almost 20% in ejaculatory volume in ejaculatory volume that there are 20% secretions coming from prostate in semen are in ejaculatory volume so what is present in this 20% secretions and uh, how these secretions are basically drained into your prostatic urethra with the help of the smaller prostatic ducts so what is present inside the prostatic secretions right uh, there will be a citric acid and these secretions will be thin and milky secretions thin milky whitish in color and then also it's having a uh, few enzymes enzyme and also the uh, you know uh, alkaline phosphatase but the rich source of the alkaline phosphatase rich source of alkaline phosphatase is the seminal vesicle secretions so overall you have to remember that only 20% of the ejaculatory fluid volume is coming from the prostate there will be you know uh, secretions from the seminal vesicles also there will be secretions from the bulbo urethral glands these are the three glands which i have told you these are accessory sex glands one is most important the prostate second is the seminal vesicles you have got two seminal vesicles you have got two bulbo urethral glands also but you have got one prostate gland remember so uh, 20% the ejaculatory uh, volume is made up of prostatic secretions milky in color rich in citric acid also there is a sugar content also uh, and then few enzymes but what is uh, the seminal you know fluid this fluid which is coming from the seminal vesicles 
सो राइट प्लीज सेमिनल वैसिकल्स सिक्रीशंस आर फ्लूड्स सेवेंटी परसेंट सेवेंटी परसेंट अजैकुलेट वॉल्यूम इज मेड ऑफ सेमिनल वेजिकल सिक्रीशन एंड दीज सिक्रीशन आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वाई फॉर द यू नो इट हैव वन स्पेशल एंजाइम द अल्कलाइन फॉस्फाटेज so i will write in red color why it's important let me discuss alkaline phosphatase so alkaline phosphatase this is the most important you know uh, you can say enzyme which is present in seminal vesicular secretions what is the function of this enzyme so overall seminal vesicular secretions are very important for the maturation and motility of the sperms also but you know inside the vagina you have got acidic environment so to neutralize that acidic environment is very dangerous for this you know ejaculatory volume especially for the sperms so this alkaline phosphatase is going to neutralize the acidic environment inside the vagina so this alkaline phosphatase is basically protecting the sperms against the acidic environment of the female reproductive organs so you have to understand the significance of this alkaline phosphatase and overall how much you know contribution in a ejaculatory volume from this seminal vesicular secretions there is 70% contribution and what are other you know products which are present inside this seminal vesicular fluid there is fructose and there is amino acids also ascorbic acid and uh, then we have got the prostaglandins so all these you know uh uh basically secretions are very important for the motility for the integrity of the sperms especially among these you have got the alkaline phosphatase and this alkaline phosphatase is basically uh, helping to neutralize the acidity of the acidic environment of the vagina to protect to save the sperms so overall you have to remember this information this is very important and then you have got the bulbo urethral glands later i will show you but let me finish please here because these are the accessory you know uh, sex gland which are very important and last one is the bulbo urethral gland so these are two in numbers bulbo urethral glands two in number present just behind the membranous urethra later i will show you the structure also two in number seminal vesicles are so two so bulbo urethral glands it's uh, present behind the membranous urethra uh, right in the base of the membranous urethra so secretions of these uh, glands are also important secretions of these glands help to lubricate lubricate especially lubricate the urethra just before the ejaculation 
so that each gland is important and function of these bulbo urethral accessory sex glands that their secretions will lubricate the urethra before the ejaculation so i have already told you that accessory sex glands are those glands which do not you know directly participate in the production of the sperm that is function of basically your uh, epididymis also the storage site but these glands are very important why for the reproduction so anything any disease infection especially in case of the uh, you know high grade temperature also which is required uh, for the normal physiology of this semen that is also very dangerous so you have to understand first the normal structure its relation and its important function also and then you have to you know preserve this knowledge this is important for your rest of life so i have told you that we have got three prostatic zones one this posterior is the peripheral zone so inside the peripheral zone you have got just the glandular tissues so 70% 70% glandular tissue is present in this zone peripheral zone peripheral zone and next write in bracket please that this zone this peripheral zone is present behind behind the prostatic urethra prostatic urethra and below to ejaculatory duct below to ejaculatory duct remember behind the prostatic urethra and below the ejaculatory duct so 70% of the tissue which is present in peripheral zone is made up of the glandular tissue it's a typical gland there is no muscle and this zone is commonly involved in malignancy in cancer so in exam you will have a question that which zone of the prostate is basically involved in prostatic cancer so that is peripheral zone it's behind the prostatic urethra and in front of the anal canal rectum so whenever you are suspecting that patient is having malignancy and with the digital rectal examination you can palpate if this zone is enlarged it indicates that patient is suffering from malignancy the tumor of this peripheral zone so first important point here second zone second zone of the prostate look Uh, this is above the ejaculatory duct and also behind the prostatic urethra and this number 2 zone of the prostate is called as central zone central zone and central zone is also basically having the glandular structure the glandular tissue but how much only 25% of the glandular tissue present in central zone and this do, this zone basically do not involve in disease also right do not involve in any disease or pathology so this is a good zone central zone this is a good zone and an anterior side anterior side here this is the anterior side anterior side you have got this you know uh, periurethral zone this is around the urethra this is around the urethra so this is a periurethral zone so let me erase this please periurethral zone third one third one periurethral zone periurethral zone or this is also called as transitional zone very important 
transitional zone what is importance of this zone that this zone is involved in bph benign prostate hyperplasia and this zone is only having 5% of the glandular tissue 5% of the glandular tissue present in this you know uh, periurethral transition zone and it's present anterior you have to write that it's present anterior to anterior to urethra so it's involved in bph benign prostate hyperplasia so it's involved in benign prostate hyperplasia which zone periurethral zone periurethral zone are the transitional zone lobes we will discuss uh, lobes we will discuss uh, uh, later but we have to remember uh, that benign prostate hyperplasia is common in transitional zone but lobe that will be medial lobe later we will discuss about the lobes so these uh, uh, zones are very important you have to draw this structure and you have to write all this information now next move forward and let's discuss please the lobes lobes of the prostate so prostate have basically five lobes five lobes number 1 you have got anterior lobe this is anterior to you know uh, urethra you have got posterior lobe which is posterior to urethra you have got then median or the medial lobe and then you have got lateral lobe also you have got two lateral lobes two lateral lobes so let me show you one structure then you will understand about the uh, lobes okay so i hope this structure is visible to all of you so in this structure you can see this is the lobes of prostate so just i have told that we will divide you know prostate into five lobes five lobes five lobes and this is a sagittal section this is a transverse section in sagittal section you can see that okay anterior to urethra just i have told you that there will be anterior lobe posterior to urethra you have got posterior lobe and uh, behind the prostatic urethra and above the ejaculatory duct you have got median lobe so median lobe is the lobe which is commonly you know involved in bph but what was the zone that was periurethral zone so this you know look look this this is the median lobe this is the median lobe and here is your urethra let me highlight this is your urethra and this this is a transverse section so this is your basically median lobe so median lobe whenever this lobe will enlarge it's going to you know obstruct and block your urethra so this is also frequently asked question that which lobe of the prostate lead to the blockage of the prostatic urethra in benign prostate hyperplasia that is the median lobe remember please mcq median lobe and then behind the median lobe here you can see you have got the posterior lobe and then anterior to urethra you have got the anterior this is very simple that anterior to urethra you have got anterior lobe and then you have got which is surrounding the prostatic urethra the medial lobe and then on the posterior side you have got posterior lobe and then on the lateral side look this is a lateral side and you have got two lateral lobes so in this way two lateral lobes one is the medial lobe 
वन इज द पोस्टीरियर लोब एंड वन इज द एंटीरियर लोब सो इन दिस वे यू हैव गॉट टोटल फाइव लोब्स ऑफ द प्रास्टेट सो वट इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड हेयर दैट विच लो लोब ऑफ द प्रास्टेट इज यू नो ब्लॉकिंग दिस प्रास्टेटिक यूरिथ्रा इन केस ऑफ द बी पी एच एंड विच लोब इज कॉमनली इन्वॉल्व इन बिनाइन प्रास्टेट हाइप्रोप्लेजिया दैट इज द मीडियम लोब बट वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द जोन्स द पेरीफ्रल जोन इज डेंजरस बिकॉज ऑफ द मेलिग्नेंसी एंड देन एंटीरियर टू द यूरिथ्रा डैट वॉज ट्रांजिशनल जोन आर द पेरिज यूरिथ्रल जोन दैट इज कॉमनली इन्वॉल्व इन बी पी एच but lobe that will be median lobe you have to understand this information and this is your sagittal view in sagittal view you can see this is this structure passing inside i have just drawn also that this is your prostatic urethra this is your ejaculatory duct and ejaculatory duct i have told you you have got two ejaculatory ducts and these two ejaculatory ducts are coming with the help of the duct of the seminal vesicle and with the help of the vas deferens and then above the ejaculatory duct and behind the prostatic urethra you have got median lobe this is your median lobe so remember this also examiner might ask you that which lobe is basically behind the prostatic urethra and above the ejaculate that is the median lobe and this lobe is very important because it it's involved in you know bph and then here you have got the posterior lobe so posterior lobe and medial lobe these two are very important why medial lobe is involved in bph and posterior lobe it's involved in basically the cancer so posterior lobe examiner might ask you that what is the zone which is involved in basically cancer that was the peripheral zone and which lobe the posterior lobe and which lobe you can you know palpate on digital rectal examination that is the posterior lobe and you can also palpate the lateral lobe so let me show you few structures and uh, but before moving to the structures first we have to discuss its blood supply very important so all this information uh, you must have to you know write in your notes and you have to you know draw these structures also you have to draw these structures i will share these structures with you so these are important structures so uh, blood supply three arteries are very important number 1 inferior vesical artery and it supply to the base of bladder and this is a branch of internal iliac artery so supply to the base of bladder and this artery also supply in the prostate gland number 2 number 2 you have got middle rectal artery middle rectal artery and then uh, number 3 internal pudendal artery internal pudendal artery so these three arteries supply to the prostate gland you have to remember these arteries and veins which carry carry deoxygenated blood that will be the internal iliac vein very simple because arteries are coming from internal iliac artery vein deoxygenated will be internal iliac vein and what are lymph nodes the internal iliac lymph nodes internal iliac lymph nodes internal iliac lymph nodes and these lymph nodes uh vessels will you know uh basically spread the tumors of the prostate in advanced stages to the other parts of the body so you have to understand that what are the lymph vessels there the internal iliac lymph node vessels and then nerve supply from inferior hypogastric plexus from inferior hypogastric plexus so please uh, let me share few other structures with you so here you can see these are the uh, zones just we have discussed lobes and this is a zone we have drawn this structure so this is your peripheral zone this is behind the prostatic urethra and below the ejaculatory duct 70% i have told you the glandular tissue and this above 
above here we have got central zone not involved in any disease anterior zone and on the anterior side you have got this fibromuscular tissue so uh, this zone is basically involved in bph so you have to draw these structures so in this structure here you can see the digital rectal examination uh, i have told you the distance of this prostate is just 4 cm from anal canal so this is the posterior uh, this is the posterior posterior lobe or the peripheral zone of the prostate and th here you can see this is the ejaculatory duct this is the prostatic urethra and at, at this part you have got the bulbo urethral glands and these bulbo urethral glands are also called as cowper's gland remember please cowper's gland and these secretions uh, basically helpful uh, for the uh, you know uh, lubrication of this all urethra before the ejaculation so behind you know just at the start of this membranous urethra these two glands p size these are the bulbo urethral glands so then another structure so this is basically uh, the trans urethral rejection of prostate that when prostate is enlarged in bph so the, at that time you have to insert this you know this device this instrument this is a uh, basically cystoscope and through the urethra you are entering into the 